If I have a temperature sensor like this TMP36 and I move it from where it is to a place where its surroundings are at a different temperature, it will take a while to come into equilibrium with those surroundings. And we need to know how quickly it's going to come into equilibrium and what that response is going to look like if we can predict what we're going to measure. Here's our TMP36. It's in an environment at an ambient temperature T sub A, but it hasn't reached that temperature yet. Its temperature is T sub S, so something different from T sub A. If T ambient is bigger than T S, then there's going to be heat transfer into our little package TMP36. And if you'd already taken the heat transfer course, you'd know that the rate of heat transfer in terms of the watts of heat transferred is going to be a heat transfer coefficient, and this sums up everything we don't really know about heat transfer yet. That heat transfer coefficient is going to have units of watts per meter squared degree Celsius. And that's because it's multiplying times the outside area, the surface area of the sensor, so this A sub S, and the difference in temperature between the ambient temperature and the sensor temperature. So the bigger the difference in temperature, the more heat is going to be transferred. The bigger the area through which that heat is being transferred, the more heat is going to be transferred. Now if we want to know how quickly this warms up, we need to do an energy balance on a control mass. So we'll draw a little control mass boundary all around our TMP36. And we can say that the change in energy inside that control mass must be equal to the energy in, however it goes in, minus the energy out. Energy that comes out no matter how it goes out. And the change in energy inside the volume here if it's just sensible heat, we're not seeing any phase change or any of that weird stuff you dealt with in your thermodynamics course, then the energy inside there will be the mass times the specific heat times the temperature, and the change in energy will be the mass times the specific heat times the change in the sensor temperature. So if it goes up by one degree, the heavier it is, or the more heat capacity it's got, the more of a change in energy that represents. The energy in, well that'll be Q, the energy in in watts or joules per second, times delta T, how long a time we're watching the control mass for. So it'll be Q times delta T. In addition, we've got a supply voltage here, and there's electrical current flowing through this sensor and back out to ground to actually operate the sensor. That's power that's going in here electrically, and it's got to be dissipated somewhere, and it's going to be dissipated as heat. So there's whatever our supply voltage is times whatever the current is that's flowing through the sensor. Again, that'll be units of watts, so it's times delta T to put it in units of joules. Now this is the self-heating current that's heating up the sensor. I read the data sheet and the values for the TMP36 are really small, so we're going to ignore the self-heating for the moment. We'll say it's approximately equal to zero. But that's something you should discuss when you're looking at the errors in your temperature measurement. So we'll wind up with MCP delta TS equal to Q, which is H times A times TA minus TS all times delta T. Or, rearranging that, we can expect the temperature of the sensor to change by an amount equal to HA over MCP times the difference in temperature between the ambient temperature and the sensor. 
So the bigger the difference, the faster the temperature will change times delta T. And if we go off and do a little calculus dividing through, that'll get us something like dTS dt equal to HA over MCP TA minus TS. And that differential equation, that's an ordinary differential equation, and you could do an analytic solution of that if you went off to the uh, ODE's course, but we'll leave that aside for the moment. We're going to get a numerical solution that we can get for a variety of situations. So delta TS equal to HA over MCP times the temperature difference, or if we define tau as equal to M CP over H times AS and call that a time constant then we can rewrite this as delta TS equal to TA minus TS divided by that time constant tau times delta T so the rate at which the temperature is going to change depends on how different the sensor is from the ambient, the time constant tau, and how long we watch for. This time constant tau has things that are all about the nature of the sensor. How big is it? What's its mass? What's its specific heat? What's it made out of? And how much energy does it take to warm that kind of stuff up? This H this heat transfer coefficient which is all about what the surroundings look like and how the heat transfer takes place and the overall size of the sensor. And let's check the units on that. Mass is in units of kilograms. Specific heat joules per kilogram degree Kelvin or degree Celsius they're the same thing if we're just talking about change H was watts per meter squared Celsius and a watt is a joule per second so that's joules per second per meter square degree Celsius and the surface area well this TMP 36 is really tiny but we'd still measure that in square meters so if we cancel out some units, the square meters will cancel out. The temperature, the degrees Celsius, will cancel out. The energy, joules, will cancel out. And the kilograms will cancel out. The mass will cancel out. We're left with just seconds. So this time constant, tau, has, a, has units of time in seconds. So if tau was, to pull a number out of a hat, five seconds, and that's a medium quick or medium slow response time constant then we could figure out how quickly this temperature would change if we looked at different times so at time t equals zero let's suppose the sensor was at zero degrees celsius and the ambient let's suppose it was boiling water at a hundred degrees celsius then T ambient minus T sensor would be 100 and delta TS for a one second delta T so that's just one delta TS would be 100 divided by tau 100 divided by 5 is 20 so the sensor temperature would increase by 20 degrees C in the first second so it goes from 0 up to 20. The ambient temperature, there's lots of stuff around the sensor, big large thermal reservoir, so it stays at 100, near enough. Now the difference in temperature is only 80 degrees Celsius. So 80 divided by 5 gives us 16. So in the second second, it'll get up to about 36 degrees Celsius. The ambient is still 100, 
The difference then is 64, and 64 divided by 5 is 12.8. So by 3 seconds along, we'll have got up to 36 plus 12.8 is 48.8 degrees Celsius, and the ambient is still 100. And if we follow this along, we'll find that by the time we reach the time constant, uh, that we get to about 63% of our response in one time constant tau. So that by the time we get to 5, this should be up to 63 degrees, give or take. Now because we only took really coarse time steps here, one second time steps, we may be off a little bit by doing our solution. So if I wanted a better answer, I'd take a smaller delta t, or I would go and do an analytical solution of the ordinary differential equation. This kind of thermal response applies no matter what system you're looking at, whether this is a TMP36 or a thermocouple, or even applying the same control mass analysis to the bed of a 3D printer that we're heating up in order to keep the, uh, the plastic that we're printing from separating from the bed.